Hello, hello, lovely people. Welcome into That Sounds Gay. My name is Jer, and I will be your podcast host for a short time. Uh, this week, I am going to be joined with Grin and Gob for a little bit. We decided to do a little fantasy concept of what All Stars 1 could have looked like. Maybe if it had been a little bit different. I've been wanting to kind of play around with this concept for a while, and I'm glad that we were able to do it together. I'm, I'm super excited. I, I hope you enjoy it. But first, I want to talk a little bit, just because it seems very relevant in many communities, especially for a lot of the gaming communities that I run in the circles of along Twitch, because this podcast very much also cycles around the Twitch world, is that the idea of cancel culture... And obviously this is not anything new. People have been, as long as I've been alive, holding people accountable in ways that oftentimes force everyone around them to take sides. I remember very specifically, there was a a moment in college, there was this person that I did not like at all. I did not like their energy. We didn't vibe. I thought they were the mustiest, nastiest person that I could have ever met. And we had a pretty big falling out. And they basically took all these, like, quote unquote receipts, you know, and tried to be like, this is why Jer is mean and this is why they're a problem and why you shouldn't be friends with them. And sort of went around and really just slandered me in front of many of my peers and it forced a lot of people to sort of make a decision about what side they wanted to fall on and I do think that calling people out on their actions is important. If someone says something to you that you don't like, someone speaks to you in a way that you don't enjoy, say something to them or find a trusted friend who knows them who can maybe mediate on your behalf so that Maybe it softens the blow a little bit because I'm a huge proponent of, for this is me personally, I'm a huge proponent of second chances. I give second chances almost to a fault. And sometimes I think maybe I give too many because I want to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. I've been on the bad side of the coin enough times where people have assumed things that I've said and have blown things out of proportion that I said and held me to a standard that didn't feel fair to me. And, uh, you know, it. I never felt like I got the opportunity to grow from the concern that it was, you're wrong, this is why you should never be spoken to again, and this is why everybody should hate you. And it was there was never an opportunity of, I want you to learn. Can you apply these changes? And so for me, I've always taken that and I've thought, I don't want anybody to feel that way. What I want to do is give someone the opportunity to learn, especially about something that they might not be aware of. Sometimes as people, we say or do certain things that step on other people's toes in one way or another, and we might not realize that's how we're coming off. Some things, you know, when you're talking directly about um, like racism or misogyny, um, anti-queerness, things like that, stuff you should know about. I, I don't know if that's necessarily excusable. I think those are certain things that everybody kind of universally knows, and I've definitely had people be like, oh, well, I was raised in the South, in Alabama, and that's just not a problem. That's just how we talk to people down there. And, uh, you know, I don't really have a lot of sympathy or grace for those people because it's 2023 right now, you know, where we've had enough time that you should know that you just don't use certain words. And so on that level, you know, there's growing and there's a certain amount of grace that does not need to be given. But on 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 other issues, the way that people talk to us, if they step on our toes, they forgot Uh, something important that made us upset and then they sort of continue on those habits until something that is small has blown up or maybe they speak to us in a condescending way and we slip that under the rug and that 
is allowed to be made into a huge deal that it didn't have to be if you had just said something and hold people accountable to those things. And I, I had a Twitch friend that made a tweet that I really resonated with. And it, it was sort of along the lines of, you know, holding on to all of this information that you're wanting to call somebody out on and not calling out their problematic behaviors until it benefits you. That's just as problematic. And I fully agree with that. There are some people that will hold on to things because they, they're like waiting till they have enough and they want to just expose you and blow things up. And they want to make sure that everybody's on their side and against the other person. And no matter what the situation is, so much could have been solved if there had just been an early conversation, right? And I, I think that sometimes we should allow people to have the chance to grow. And if you don't give them that benefit of learning, of trying to become a better person, you are robbing them of opportunities. You are robbing other people in their life. You're robbing yourself of a great relationship. And I've talked many times on this podcast about relationships and those dynamics. And sometimes with that plant metaphor that I bring up all the time, sometimes you have to prune your plant and you have to bring up concerns and say, hey, the way that you talk to me is a problem. I don't like that. What can we do to fix this? Is Are we at an impasse? Can we not salvage this? Or is this something you can work on? And if they do, great. You have then grown your relationship. You've made it stronger because you're able to work through something. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect because I've obviously had problems with this in the past, but it's something that I'm noticing, especially right now. And I think post everything with Colleen Ballinger, the internet sort of feels like really feral about canceling people and calling them out. And I think that's important. We should call people out on their behaviors that are problematic, but it should be with the intention of letting them grow and learn and become better people. And if they've been given two, three, four, five warnings, however many you're willing to dole out, and they're still not changing, sure, cancel them. And I think what happened with Colleen in particular these are things that have been brought up many, 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 many times from what everybody's talking about. It's not like it was just a one-off thing that got brought up that never got to be addressed. These, this was it. There was a history, right? A lot of these other people, especially in the communities that I'm running in, there has not seemed to be any type of reach out. Not with, uh, not with all of them, you know? And so I think going forward... I would love to see more empathy. You should have the opportunity to receive that criticism in the same way that you should give that to others. And if you don't feel safe doing that, I think, again, that idea of getting someone to mediate between saying, hey, you know so-and-so pretty well. Do you know if they talk like, do they talk to you like this? Because it really bothers me. And then they say, oh, no, I'm never had that problem before. They've, they've never been a concern to me. I can't believe they're doing that. Uh, you know, how can I help? Do you want me to talk to them and see if there's I can resolve this? I think that's the most effective way of solving problems before they become a greater issue, at least in my experience and my perspective. But do with that what you will. Take that how you will. And with everything you do, attempt to do everything with empathy. Do everything guiding with the idea that there is a person that you're talking to and that they are going through things as well and may not know that what they're doing or saying is wrong. And that is my main thought and I would love to uh, move into the podcast episode today. So uh, let's chit chat about RuPaul's Drag Race and move into something a little more frivolous. <laughs> I want 
wanted to chat with you about what All Stars 1 would look like if it was in the All Stars 2 format. Oh, absolute mess. Like, the pudding cup has been dropped. It has been stepped in. Someone has dropped their wig on it, and now they have to go on the runway. <laughs> so you think it would be messy? Yes, and I think the primary fact for that is there wasn't a trust in the format yet, because it was mm. still evolving. Yeah. And even in that season, like, spoilers, I guess, for next week is, like, the double, like, Shantae you stay was... right such an impact that it affected so much down the line right that i think if it had been like the all stars 2 format it would have been too much being different at the same time there would have been a lot mm. less trust in the show like there was already a lot of questions about the legitimacy about certain queens being there right they had the finale issue uh the season before and right so much up in the air that i think it had to be RuPaul calling all the shots on, like, you have to go home, you have to go home. Yeah. And then in the next season, or well, next All-Star season, a little different, the uh, lip sync for your legacy. Right. Which, I I really love the legacy one. You have already gotten to the Assassin season, right? Yes, I have, and I enjoyed that so much. I really like it. It's so cool. Like, the assassin format, I almost like better. Because I like the fact that the queens vote for who to send home. But jumping into this, let's just, like, dive into what this would be and try and speed through it as quick as possible. Because I really think the show would go so different. Yes, All Stars 1 is very production heavy. And I think it would have remained that way had it been in the this season two format for that first season. But I, I think that there would have been even a completely different winner, in my opinion. I'm not sure about that. My personal opinion, which has absolutely no evidence <laughs> for it, is that Chad Michaels was brought in to be like, you're a winner, baby. Absolutely. And I think if it had been lip sync for your legacy, I think other queens would have received a lot more attention and a lot more right. like acknowledgement of their craft versus like no we're just working through the episode so we can get to the family and get the crown to the one we want yeah no very much that and i think that all the all-stars minus maybe like season three it feels like they had a specific idea of who they wanted to win and they were going to give it to that person no matter who got in the way and all star six when you finally get there those are the only two that i think are the only exceptions where it, it didn't feel like they wanted one particular, or even if they did want one particular person to win, something changed along the way. So with this season, we have all of our, our queens. We have Alexis Mateo, Chad Michaels, Juju B, Latrice Royale, Manila Luzon, Mimi I'm First, Nina Flowers, Pandora Box, Raven, Chanel, Tammy Brown, and Yara Sophia. And obviously we'll get a little bit deeper into all this when we do the actual All-Stars episode. But let's just assume that everything's kind of about the same. So we have episode one, which would be the talent show. And we don't know what some of these girls would do. We know what Latrice and Manila might do, what Alexis and Yara might do, what Jujubee might do because of their appearances on the show. Who do you think would, would take the win in a talent show type situation? In a talent show situation, that definitely changes it up completely. Because mm. remind me, it was um, it was uh, Chanel and oh goodness, uh, so, no, it was uh, it was Latrice and Manila. No, who won first? Am I wrong? Um, I think you. I'm looking right now. Yeah, Latrice and Manila won the first one, and that was the photo challenge. So. Right, where they had the um, the eyeglass. No, that was uh, that was Juju B and Raven who had the eyeglass thing. It, Manila and Latrice had the um, the power tools and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was an interesting photo for sure. It was a very interesting yeah, photo. A lot of good stuff came out of that. But if it was a talent show, that really changes it up. I still think Latrice and Manila could have brought it, but in terms of like who could have brought the best act, mm. it's a toss up between. Uh, team Latrilla and Alex Mateo and Yara Sophia. I yes, I really truly think that the top two, if it were in that format, 
I mean, it could be anybody, but I think I think the two of them would give it. I think your Alexis would absolutely kill it. And as for the bottoms, I really feel like Mimi would not do that good. I feel like she'd be pretty low. Plus, they, I don't know if they even wanted her on the season that badly. Here's your meath disqualifying all bottoms. <laughs> I'm not only canceling tops, I'm also canceling bottoms now. It is on the list. Yes, that has to be known to the world that on their <laughs> live Twitch stream, tops are jokingly not canceled. Welcome. Canceled and not excuse welcome. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> Just block me right now. Um, I think, though... I think, yes, you're right that they may have not wanted her on the show, especially after what happened last season. Right. But I think we still would have seen a lot of the weird tensions going on because of the team dynamic. Yeah. Even if it was in All Stars 2 format. Mm. Like, we've seen uh, cooperative lip syncs in one of the episodes where, like, they were allowed to, like, tag team. And oh, right, right. Mm -hmm. I won't get too much into that, but, like, with how that went, I think it would have been a mess. Oh, a little bit. Definitely. With the tension thing that you already brought up, is the Mimi I'm first versus everyone, how fierce would it have been, though, if Alexis had won the lip sync and got to send Mimi home on top of being great TV? Like, that would have been such a TV <laughs> moment. And I could see them hap that happening, where, like, Mimi would, was is definitely always, no matter what version of the show this was, I think Mimi's always number one to go, in my opinion. I, I think so as well. However, would the rules be the same that you're sending one person home, or are you sending the team home? L let's just assume it's entirely All-Stars 2 format, where it's okay, okay, they send okay. one. Just um, one. It would definitely be Mimi, just because after that Mimi versus everyone scene was just, somebody has to go home first, and it was just right. like... Like, there was some, like, mild defense of that. Like, oh, you guys are being mean. But <laughs> beyond that, like, nobody was really defending Mimi. Right. Right. So then Mimi's out for episode one, we're, we're going to assume. Because I want to try and whittle this down to a top four based on this format. So episode two was the Gaffin, which is a oh replacement goodness. for Snatch Game. And it was kind of a, a weird challenge. It Since really we was. don't really know what everybody would do for a Snatch game, let's just assume that they would kind of do the same characters. In my personal opinion, I think the winners of these, I, I really don't know who would do well. I think potentially Yara could win it if she did Charo again. Maybe. Like, Chad Michaels did well in the new weird format, but also, like is really good at Snatch Game, so mm. it's possible Chad Michaels could have come in and done another swoop in and be like, this is mine. A but Chad and I Yara think... lip sync would be so fierce. Oh my goodness, imagine that. Can I get that, please? I this would have loved great television. that. No matter what the song would have been, it would have been cool to see. It really in my opinion, I think Nina. Nina and Tammy are like the most obvious choices for being in the bottom for this one. And I feel like they would probably want to hold on to Nina for a bit. I can't imagine that any of the queens would be like, ah, Tammy Brown, she deserves to go farther. I'm just going to say, like, during that challenge when she comes out, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm very confused. I'm not very good at this. It's just like, <laughs> I feel that in my soul. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, and I feel like that would be definitely a, okay, well, if you're not good at this, then you should go home. I can imagine that they would probably all be a little bit frustrated with that type of attitude and mentality that they may just boot her out. I think, though, that was more in jest towards, like, the producers who were For probably sure. getting a little uh, frustrated. but Punchy. <laughs> yeah, but I feel as if, though, as the... The stakes get higher, basically. The demand gets higher. Mm. We see more queens just fizzling out at the beginning. And I think right. All Stars 1 was the beginning of seeing a glimpse of that. Oh, completely. Yeah. I think if it was a lip sync between Yara and Chad, 
I want to say Yara Sophia would win, but Chad Michaels does very much bring it. It depends on what the song was, I think. That, yeah. If it was something a little more power ballad I could see Yara losing. If it was something a little more like pop, pop, titty, pop, pop, I could see Yara <laughs> winning that. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yeah. The problem, though, with it being like one queen only going home is like you're basically doubling the season length. And I think this is yeah. more of like... I think that's why they had to send two home at a time, because it was sort of like a budget issue. Yeah. Oh, it fully was. And and we'll get into all of that when we do the actual All Stars episode. But I will say, it was supposed to be a full season. It was okay, absolutely supposed I, to be. I can't wait seven days for this, but I guess I have to. <laughs> it oh was fully goodness. supposed to be uh, an entire season. And like last minute... I think it was WOW or, or Logo. I can't remember which one. One of them said, actually, we don't know if this format's going to do that well, so we're giving you half the budget. Good luck. And so oh <clears throat> they had to squish it down. And that's why I think, I'm almost positive, that's why Willem got shafted. Because they were like, oh, well, if we don't have this many episodes, we don't want to bring in these queens. Let's just bring in these ones. So they swapped out Willem last minute for somebody, but... It's unsure who that person was. There's a lot of tea going on. There's with so much. And <laughs> I think there's a lot of unjustified hate. But again, we can get yeah. into this. Uh, I love we're into this so with season much. four stuff, but we'll get into it next week as well. Right. Okay, so we're gonna assume that Tammy's out now. Yes. Let's assume that the next challenge, if we're gonna like maybe add some stuff in, let's assume they would do like. Uh, VH1, Queens uh, for, of the World or something, some type of musical production. And based off of all these queens, they're all pretty decent lip syncers and performers. So it's kind of hard to determine who would do bad in a lip sync challenge where they're all portraying a character. It depends on if it's just going to be a free-for-all performance or if there is choreography because it seems as mm. if the queens who are really good at choreography are sometimes good at like free form and yeah. other times the ones who are really really good at free form just crash and burn with right. uh, choreography i could see maybe raven and manila not doing super well in a challenge like this i would also say latrice might not do well with if it was choreographed i could also see that so then if it was choreo choreographed, I mean, I could, s I, I really feel like Yara and Alexis would kill it, but I think that they are great at everything, so I'm slightly biased. <laughs> I also, I think that depending on what she got, I think Pandora could do pretty decent too. Or maybe even Juju. Oh, JK. There's so many of them. Juju versus Alexis, though, if they were the top two that week. Oh, I would be screaming at the TV in all the best of ways because those two are just phenomenal. Right. So, like, God, if it was bottom two... I mean, Raven can't do choreography. And Raven doesn't super lip sync in any of her gigs. She's very low-key. She can camp it up and she can lip sync, but it's not really, like, her gig to portray a character and do that. So I can absolutely see Raven being in the bottom... And based oh, off of, I know it would be, wouldn't it? But based off of the All Stars performance, where Manila did that that um, that lip sync challenge, the the I'm a, what was it? What was that challenge that they did? Was it the Stacy one? I don't remember. Whatever their whatever the All Stars four challenge was, Manila was in the bottom for that one. And I could see Manila doing poorly here, and I I think. I don't see either one of them getting rid of Raven. It really depends on, like, what they would be... What their approach would be. Like, is it getting rid of the strongest competition? Are we getting uh, graded on the report card? That mm. sort of thing. But I think Latrice would be safe if Latrice was in the bottom. Yeah. And I think Raven has, at least at this point has more support than Manila. Yeah. So I think Manila would have potentially gone home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I think, the same thing for the support issue only. 
Oh, yeah. it like feels bad to eliminate them <laughs> in this hypothetical does. situation. And this is the sort of the strain that the queens feel on all the all-stars where mm-hmm. they have to do the eliminations where it feels like they're crushing someone's dream. They're in the right. room with them deciding their fate. And it's like, it, you're trying to say like, it's not personal. And of course it's <laughs> usually, usually not, but it still hurts. Right. It totally, it really does though. So, okay. What would be another challenge that they would do? Something like an improv acting because they always do those in All Stars, and I think uh, also, correct me if I'm wrong. All Stars One does have an improv, doesn't it? They have the the queens behaving badly, which is like the That's street the pranks. Um, and I yeah, think that I, they I, might I, still do that later. I hate that challenge. I hate I I it too. I don't like that the street challenge. challenges. It's I get secondhand embarrassment really hard for them. Oh, I cringe so hard. I cringe so freaking hard. So let's assume it, like, they'll do that later if there's another acting challenge, just, like, a random improv acting. I think Latrice would take it. Latrice would absolutely win that episode, in my opinion. And then as people like, who do Who bad. could give her a run for her money? I mean, Juju B. Juju, probably, yeah. She did well in her acting challenge. I don't think Raven would do that well. Um, when they did stand up in, was it season two? There was the acting challenge, though, where she had to do that chicken, and she was so flat. She lip synced that episode. I'm trying to I'm trying to like, that, oh, not that. Oh, I, you I blocked it out. out from my memory. <laughs> like, even, like, Raven eventually realized, like, oh, that was really, yeah, really bad. Like, that would be that her was plot line. Camp. She would be like, I did oh. so bad during that chicken challenge. I can't do bad this time. And they'd put her in the bottom. And then she'd, pro- she'd be sitting back there like, I'm just so upset that I'm going to be eliminated. Like, you can't send me home. I did so bad in that chicken challenge. And I, I really need to stay here. I want to redeem myself. I need to redeem myself. Yeah. Like, I fully think that she'd be in the bottom. But I think it would be like Juju versus Latrice for like the win. Yeah. I think and that I would think- fully happen. That would be really hard to pick. This is literally just going to be pick one at random. I'm going to say <laughs> Latrice. I love Juju, but again, like, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I think Latrice would have won. Latrice would win that lip sync. But then who goes home? Because I don't think Raven would do that well. I think Pandora would be fine. Chad might be fine. Yara might struggle. I think Yara might struggle. We've seen that before, and... Yara's been picked on basically for like yeah. not having English as a first language, but I don't think that's ever necessarily been a hindrance. I think they just yeah. perceive it as one, and they've been like, "Oh, you should do better, do less accent, but mm. more accent." I also high key don't think Chanel would do that well in a situation like that. I think doing an acting improv challenge. I don't know if Chanel works that well with other people in situations like that. If it was a stand-up improv of some kind, like solo, I think, yeah, it would be fine. But yeah, an, an acting challenge, improv, Chanel would also flop. Yes, I agree. So, whittling it down, let's say it's all three of them. Raven, Chanel, Yara, because, you know, they love to do that. This week, it's three who are up for elimination. And it's Latrice versus Jujube. Of those three, who would they send home? Because I feel like it might be Chanel. You might be right. I think so. <gasps> no, you know what would happen? Mm. Jujubee and Latrice would both win. Oh my god. The three would be up for lip sync, and then two lipsticks would be pulled out. You think? Two different yes. ones? And I would be crying because I'd be like, oh no, not Yara. Do you think that they would do Chanel and Yara? I think so. Oh my god, could you imagine? I'd be upset. Could you? Im- that'd be a gag. Let's do it. Let's be, <laughs> let's do it. Let's eliminate both of them right now. Years oh later, my we're God. just like executing queens <laughs> verbally. <laughs> Could you imagine? That'd be crazy. I don't want to imagine. That'd be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that is what would happen. They would shorten the season that way yeah. and then have some sort of like potential return later on, which... Yeah. 
that's always been an odd mechanic of the show, but they yeah. enjoy it. Okay. So for our next episode, let's let's do something let's switch something out. So let's do the girl groups as a potential challenge. So it's gonna be a two, two and three group. So it'll be like, I don't know, Alexis and the maybe they're like they get to choose whoever they want. So like Alexis and Nina or Alexis and Pandora, Chad, Nina, doesn't, I guess like it, whoever gets paired doesn't matter. But the same girls that came back and they have to do that, that um, dance challenge where right. they did the, the girl groups with Katie Z, Jillian and Kelly Osborne, who is fierce, by the way, I love Kelly Osborne. Who would struggle in, in this, in this challenge? At this point, uh, it comes down to, again, choreography, uh, on point performance because you're in a group. Mm hmm. Latrice and Raven? You think both of them would struggle? I think Latrice would, str I, you know, I think Pandora would struggle too. Pandora was did not thought. do great in All Star 6, spoiler alert, for one of the girl group challenges. She can't really do choreography. So, like, maybe all three of them struggle really hard. Another all three up for elimination. Mm-hmm. But I think Alexis would kill it. I think Alexis would absolutely kill it. I think so, too. And correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Alexis go home during the girl group? Yeah, unfortunately. Because they really didn't want to send home Chad. Even though Chad did the worst, in my opinion, of that episode. In my opinion. I'm trying to remember who won that episode. Was it Chad? It was, it was, it was Chad Team Shad. And... Yeah, Shad. Um... <laughs> and uh, Chanel and Chad. Both of them won that. And that's when um, Yarlexis went home. Oh, I didn't like that. I, I didn't was, either. <laughs> I, was, I mean, I am, again, biased, but I really liked Raven and Jujubee's performance in that. It, like, it made me live more. Yeah. My life extended by three years. <laughs> I think if it's this group of people and Alexis wins the whole thing, because I think she would, I think it'd be Alexis versus Jujubee. And I think Alexis would absolutely stomp. I think Alexis would probably send home Raven. You think so? If Raven's been in the bottom as many times as I think she would be, maybe she might be over it. Or maybe Alexis might be stra uh, strategic and be like, well, you're probably going to be in the bottom again, so let me Roxy you up to the top. <laughs> so maybe she'd get rid of Pandora. No, no. <laughs> I said what I said. Raven would be the, the OG Roxy Andrews. Oh, no. I love Roxy, by the way. I'm, I'm just being shady here. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maybe Tell Pandora, then? I think it would be, yeah. Unfortunately, it would be between Raven and Pandora, because Pandora was my first thought of, like, I think that would be a bit of a struggle. Yeah, maybe. Because Pandora is one of those queens who has, like, these amazing strengths in mm -hmm. one area, but then, like, the weak points are really weak points. That's true. That's really true. Okay, so let's do your favorite challenge in the whole world, the Queen's Behaving Badly, our secondhand embarrassment <laughs> challenge. No. They get to pair off, so Raven mm -hmm. and Jujubee are together. We'll say that Alexis and Chad go together because they've, right. you know, just happened to me, and Latrice and Nina get together. Oh. Okay, I right away, so Raven and Jujubee were already together in the... Queen's got bad. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And I th I want to say they performed well. They performed no, decent. They didn't go yeah, that's what I remember, but I, they didn't win because it was Team Chad. Yeah. And I think it was Chanel who maybe pulled a lot of that because yeah. he was doing like one after the other. Chanel held the whole team together during that challenge. I if so. it had been Chad with anybody else, I don't think Chad would have done well. Chad just really did not know how to grab people's attention. I think that Rujubi would still be decent. So, I mean, maybe Chad and Alexis might struggle. But also, I don't really see Nina doing that well either. And I, I don't see Latrice say, do that well. Yeah, I would say 
Wait, Latrice was still around at that point, didn't? Yeah, that Latrice was the episode then... they went home. Okay, there we go. I was gonna say I think Latrice and Nina would struggle the most, and potentially one of them would go home. If it was a, if you're not in the top, you're in the bottom situation. So like, Rujubi wins, oh, and okay, it's yeah. Latrice, Chad, Alexis, Nina. I it, let's assume Jujubi wins because she probably would stomp Raven. Who would she knock out of those four? Nina Flowers. You think so? Yes. You think Nina's out? Oh my god, I would gag. Specifically because I think they have the most vague relationship at this point. That's true. I think it, yeah, you're probably right. So Juju knocks out Nina, and we move on to episode five, which would be the, the semi-finale. Let's, let's make a, an assumption here that they might do like the comedy challenge, like the full stand-up as the entire episode, rather than the, the finale thing where they had to go do that random little sketch. So all five of them, we have Raven, Latrice, Juju, Chad, and Alexis all doing stand-up. Who struggles? Latrice is the only one... Uh, well, yeah, Latrice is the only one we've never seen do stand-up before. Alexis was very funny in her season stand-up. And the other three we all got to see perform that season. So... I think it would be between Alexis and Chad who would do the worst. Yeah, potentially. I think Latrice would probably pull it out. I think so as well. I think Latrice has just such an off-the-cuff comedy style that just comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine she'd probably have a lot of prepared notes and then just throw the notes out the window. And <laughs> so if it's... Because I think Raven would, would do the best. And I think Latrice would do great. But Latrice would absolutely beat Raven in that lip sync. I think like, Chad hands Michaels down. would go home. Chad's going home! Right! Because Latrice would be like, I'm not keeping Chad here. Chad could win the whole thing. I don't think it's that. I think it comes down again to the relationship of, like, mm. Vegas relationship. But also Chad has either been carried or has not performed as well. True. I don't think Latrice would be shady. I Maybe, well, <laughs> the shade, the shade <laughs> of it all. Maybe the finale episode, maybe there's still one more. Because I love that idea of the, the drag duos, the superhero supervillain. What if they all had their own superhero supervillain? They had to do no teams at all. So it's, and this whittles it down to the top three. So it's Alexis Raven, Juju, Latrice. Who struggles? Oh, in a superhero challenge? Mm -hmm. I think it might be Latrice and... I was going to also say Latrice. Maybe I Juju. I going to say, you think? They liked Raven's look. That The they... duality was great. And I think Alexis would pull out something really frilly for her first one. She could pull out something super dark for the second one. I don't think they like Juju's like mall look. And I, I really don't think by this point that they would be featuring whatever Latrice had to give anymore, you know? Oh, dang. All right. <laughs> so we have, <laughs> we have Juju and Latrice at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> all right, I'm calm. I, I can get this. Uh, is this just all fantasy all the same? <laughs> right, it's all oh. fantasy. Alexis okay. beats Raven. There's no way. If Alexis wins, I think she would send home Latrice. You think so? Yes. Fully. But who knows? Who knows? I don't think she would send home Juju. I think everybody loves Juju B. I mean, everyone loves Latrice, too. Or well, maybe... That's true. These are two beloved queens in the bottom. I think... Juju was adored earlier than Latrice. Mm. Also came from an earlier season, too, so you right. know. But, okay, I can go with that. Like, Alexis <laughs> eliminates Latrice, and I'm crying on the floor, I'm sure. I know! I'm in the corner! If it was that song, maybe Raven could win, and Raven would not send Juju home. Okay, so no matter what. No matter, I think Latrice is out no matter who wins okay. that lipstick. In my opinion. <laughs> so it's the finale, and it's Alexis, it Juju, and Raven. Maybe they still have to do that random Hamburger Mary's thing. And then the final, uh, the interview. They probably absolutely have to do the interview. Oh, yeah. And some sort of, like, extravaganza runway. Yeah. 
and then they stand, you know, all on the stage, lip sync for their legacy, and all getting emotional, not sure what to do. <laughs> and then I think... Who gets cut from top three? Alexis. You think? Unfortunately, yes. I feel like it might be... Well, so the track record-wise, we've put Raven in the bottom, what, four times now? <laughs> Maybe. I think I Raven would get cut. I think we put her in the bottom like four times. <laughs> so I think in Raven our fantasy would get cut. world, in our fantasy world, does Juju be finally get a win? She could. I think it could go either way with them. It could really go either way. Alexis versus Juju would be so cool to see for the first season. Oh my goodness. God, I feel like they, they love Juju. And in our fantasy world, she's been doing really well. So is Alexis. And, like, I stand both of them so hard. It's so difficult in my head to, to decide who would do better out of the two of them. I agree. It would be heart-wrenching. And <laughs> this isn't fantasy anymore. This is turning into a nightmare. <laughs> can we, in our fantasy, can we crown both of them and make them the first yes. twinners? <laughs> yes. I mean, I hate that, but Yes. So in the the Grin Meath Fantasy Drag Race Season 1 of All Stars, we are going to double crown Alexis Mateo and Jujube and celebrate them as the wonderful drag queens that they both are. <laughs> Alexa B. Alexa B! Let's go. I'd be so into that. <laughs> I would love to see them, like, duo. Yeah, I think they'd be fierce. They'd be really okay. fierce. I want to really cleanse this all from my brain. I'm looking forward to doing the actual All-Stars next week, though. Yeah, me too. Me too. Thank you for doing this random little mini-sode with me. Yeah, very good. This was fun, even though it hurt. I know, it really did. Like, I'm going to go cry. I'm going to eat a tub of ice cream. I'm going to have a nap. I'm going to look out the window, and if it's not raining, I'm going to put a hose on and so it sprays against the window, and I'm just going to look out and be like... Why? Can you please, while be... you're doing that, can you do a MacArthur Park lip sync? Yes. Someone will... left <laughs> the cake out in the rain as you, like, smudge your non-existent mascara. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll go in and apply the mascara, and while it's still wet, immediately smudge it. <laughs> Reapply. Smudge again. And then take one eyelash and glue it to your cheek. <laughs> And then, like, um, just dramatically take it off and throw it. <laughs> uh, so good. Well, thank you so much, Grin, yeah. for joining me for this one. And thank yeah, you thank for you everyone for who's me. missing. Of course. We will officially do All-Star Season 1 next time. Thank you for listening. Stay stunning. Know you're doing a great job. And you're doing the best that you can. And that is all you can do. Goodbye. Bye, all.